Okay, we are back. I did not fast forward it to 13 minutes, but we just saw a great negotiation for a well. This is part two of Uthman, and they throw it's Uthman Ib Alifan. Alifan. I already forgot. Would you get out of here? Move your butt. Okay. It's video two. Let's go. Me the other half of your worthless well. I don't really need it. I've got half of it. What do I need the other half for? Smart businessman. On another occasion, the Masjid, Masjid al Nabawi, built by the Muslims in Medina, it became too small because so many people were becoming Muslim now that the Masjid was not able to suit the capacity. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, Who is the one who will buy this land belonging to so and so and then add it to the Masjid so that the Masjid may be expanded so that he will have his place in Jannah? Immediately, Uthman ibn Affan went and he bought that land for 20,000 dirham. And then it was given and added to the masjid. On another occasion, the Prophet ﷺ told the Muslims that whoever buys a slave, a Muslim slave, and then sets him free, Allah will free him from the hellfire. For every limb of that slave, every limb of that person will be saved. So Uthman ibn Affan, when he heard this, he made it his practice that every Jummah, he would buy slaves and set them free. Until the point the historians say he set free over a thousand slaves and they lost track of how many slaves he bought because every Jummah who would do this. Radiallahu anhu. To the point that we even see wow. in Hudaybiyah when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi sends Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu to negotiate with Quraysh. He was a noble man of Quraysh as an ambassador from the Muslims. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was held up over there with Quraysh. And the rumor reaches the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Uthman passed away. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has an unarmed group of men, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes a bay'ah, an allegiance, a pledge from each and every single one of the believers that we will fight on behalf of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And to the extent that after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took allegiance from everybody, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes his right hand and he takes his left hand and he clasps his hand together and he says, and this is for Uthman. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he says, oh how I wish to have been the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on that day. And then of course it turned out that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had not passed away and that was just a rumor. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, verily, there is no doubt about it. Every single person who took allegiance to you that day under the tree in Bay'atul Ridwan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. One of the moments that where Uthman radiallahu anhu stood out was the preparation of the army of Tabuk. And now the Prophet needs to build up this army. So the Prophet stood up and he said, Who will prepare the army of Al-Usra? Distress, difficulty. And for him will be Al-Jannah. So Uthman radiallahu anhu got up and he said, I will donate a hundred camels, reins, ropes, everything you need. You just have to get on and go. 100% ready to go. Sat down. Fundraising, we need more. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu got up and he said, I will give another hundred. Then he sat down. Then the Prophet needed more. Uthman got up again and another hundred and it is narrated that he got up seven times one narration says he got up ten times so like he bought Al-Jannah seven times over or ten times over by preparing for the army of al and then brings a thousand dinars and puts them on, into the garment of the Prophet and the Prophet is sitting there and he's just saying nothing that Uthman does after today will harm him he bought Jannah for himself from amongst those things that made Uthman ibn Affan so great was his great shyness, his great modesty, his great haya in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the Prophet ﷺ was at home and he was lying down and some of his legs, some part of his legs were uncovered. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu knocked on the door and asked for permission to enter. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him permission. And so Abu Bakr entered and the Prophet ﷺ did not change his posture nor did he cover up his legs. So Abu Bakr came and spoke to the Prophet ﷺ and then he left. And then Umar came and he asked for permission. 
and he entered and he spoke to the Prophet and the Prophet did not change his posture nor cover his legs and then Umar he left and then some time later Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu he came and he knocked on the door and he asked permission as soon as the Prophet sallallahu heard the voice of Uthman he sat up and then he covered his legs and he adjusted his clothes and then gave permission so Uthman came and spoke to the Prophet sallallahu and then he left so Aisha radiallahu anha who was in the house she said Ya Rasulullah when Abu Bakr and Umar came you did not change your posture but when Uthman came you sat up and you adjusted your clothes I'm gonna say it's just it's a completely different level of respect that he has for Uthman over the other two not to say that you know it's la it's it's like they're bad but you know so far this guy's really going out of his way to prove he's good and he doesn't need to keep doing this he's he's already proved it why did you do this so the prophet sallallahu alaihi he said should i not feel shyness and modesty from a man from whom even the angels are shy that the shyness of Uthman was born from his awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is so great so majestic so perfect and I am so weak and disobedient and sinful and so this would cause him to be shy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why the Prophet he said that the most true in his modesty from my nation is Uthman the most sincere in his modesty and his shyness is Uthman radiallahu anhu. That he was so humble in his talk, so modest and soft-spoken, that you would have to come so close to him just to hear what he was trying to tell you. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu. He says, I once saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam raising his hands from the beginning of the night until the end of the night, saying, Oh Allah, I am pleased with Uthman, so be pleased with him. This tale of love between the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Uthman Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu This story of love, you can only imagine how it was like when he passed away Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It was so much so that Uthman Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu That what's narrated about him in the books of Sirah He became silent to the point that people thought he was mute he was so taken aback by the death of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That he no longer was able to speak Uthman ibn Affan, at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, there came a year of drought. The drought was so severe that the people were hungry. They were, they were literally dying of hunger. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu told him, pray to Allah, pray for rain and so on. That I'm pretty sure he was crushed when, when Muhammad died. And I think Muhammad would have been crushed when, if Uthman died. And so on. That day, people had heard that there is a great caravan of Uthman coming from the northern part of the peninsula. And it has in it a lot of food and a lot of provision. And sometime later in the afternoon, a huge caravan consisting of 1,000 camels pitched up into Medina Munawwara and it literally stopped at the door of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. And the people had come out and they started helping getting the produce down and all the merchandise. Most of it was actually food stuff. And Uthman ibn Affan emerged and the businessmen of Medina Munawwara who had the money, they emerged and they said, Oh Uthman, we want to buy from you. The people are dying of hunger. We want to buy from you th from this food. We will give you for every dirham that you spent two dirhams. He's going to give it away for free. That's just what he does. Which means we give you 100% profit. He said, no, I, someone has offered me more. So they said, okay, we give you more. He said, no, someone has offered me even more. So they said, okay, we will give you even more. And they continued. He said, sorry, someone has offered me more than whatever you people have offered. They said, it cannot be. We are the business people of Medina Munawwara. We know we are the first to come to you. Who else has spoken to you? Nobody would be foolish to give you so much. He said, Allah has promised me that he will multiply it tenfold for me. They looked at him shocked. They said, what do you mean? 
He said, I make you witness that all these thousand camels you see here, I have donated them for the Muslimin. They can have them. I don't want a single dirham or dinar. This is between me and Allah. You people may have this. This was Uthman ibn Affan, the great hero, the man who spent. Subhanallah. Uthman, he once said, three things have been made beloved to me from this life. Out of this dunya, it's not wealth or power that I crave, but three things that I love. Feeding the one who is hungry and clothing the one who is naked and doesn't have clothes and reciting the Quran. So Uthman ibn Affan, he loved to spend his life spending his time in the service of his brothers, feeding the weak and the needy and the, and the hungry, clothing those who had no clothes, helping those who were in need, and spending his time reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu, he loved the Quran so much, it was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his name would forever be connected to the Quran. During the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet ﷺ would teach the Qur'an in different ways. And he told the Sahaba that the Qur'an has been sent down in seven different dialects. The meaning is the same, but sometimes the words are different. And this was sent down as a mercy to the Muslims. Because the Arabs during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they did not speak the same dialect. They did not all speak the dialect of Quraysh. Different tribes had different ways of reciting and speaking Arabic. And these ways were taught by Jibreel to the Prophet Sallallahu and then he taught the companions these different ways. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum preserved these different dialects. And during the time of Uthman radiallahu anhum, these Muslims from different parts of the world now joined. So in one of these places, Azerbaijan, the Muslims from Syria and the Muslims from Iraq. But when it came time to pray, they noticed the differences between their different ways of reciting. So one would say Maliki Yawm din and the other would say Maliki Yawm din And many of these people, they were new Muslims and they were not Arabs. They were Persians or other ethnicities. So they were not familiar with these differences amongst the tribes. They did not know that these differences were part of the Arabic language and things that were taught by the Prophet So they started to argue. So one of those who witnessed this argument was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu, the great companion of the Prophet so as soon as he saw this arguing, he became scared. That now the Muslims are following the way of the Jews and the Christians. So likewise now he was afraid the same thing would happen to the Muslims. So he left Azerbaijan and immediately he made his way to Al-Madinah. And when he reached Al-Madinah, he went to the Khalifa, Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu. And he said, Ya Abir al Mu'mineen, unite this nation upon one Quran. And then he told Uthman what happened. Uthman called a meeting of the major Sahaba, the leaders amongst the Sahaba. The Sahaba said, they said, you are our leader. You are the most learned, learned amongst us. You are the best of us. Give us your opinion. Uthman said, my opinion is that we make a standard version of the Quran that becomes a reference for all the Muslims. And then we make copies of this reference and we send it throughout the Muslim world. They will all have a single reference to go back to and judge what is the true word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the companions agreed that this is the right course of action. So Uthman then called for a copy of the Quran, which had been kept, that had been commissioned during the time of Abu Bakr, and had been kept with the daughter of Umar. So he called for this copy to be brought, and then he appointed four of the Sahaba to make a committee in charge of distributing these copies of the Quran. Zayd ibn Thabit, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Sa'id ibn al-As, and Abdurrahman ibn al-Harith. Four of the great Sahaba who were scholars of the Quran. And he said, look now at this copy of the Qur'an and preserve, write a copy that can encompass all of the different dialects that were revealed by the Prophet ﷺ. So they made these copies of the Qur'an. And then he sent these copies to different provinces throughout the Muslim world. And not one letter, one harf, one sound has been changed. And he sent a reciter of the Qur'an along with each of these copies to teach the people that this is the right way to recite the Qur'an. And then Uthman gave instructions that any other copy of the Qur'an that is different from this copy, it should be burned. At his time, they say the people were good, relations were good. Anyone who did not have, he provided for them. Sometimes with his own personal wealth, not necessarily the coffers of the Muslims. 
and so many different regions had now entered into the governorate of the Muslims from amongst them parts of Russia and Cyprus, Armenia and North Africa. So more and more areas of people had accepted Islam under the leadership of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh. But people become jealous. A man known as Abdullah ibn Sabah and he had started major issue against Uthman ibn Affan claiming that Uthman had appointed all his relatives as people who were the leaders of the various lands of the Muslims. Yet those were... Don't like the guy with the uh, jealousy. It's not a good thing. Okay. Back to the video. I'm going to stop it shortly. Those were appointed by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu before Uthman. And Uthman had not even changed the bulk of them. But this was just a fitna. This was a way of instilling problem that now the Muslims are growing. They have huge lands. The East and the West is all now turning to Islam. The best way to destroy the Muslims, internal conflict. Yep. So they started creating hatred against Uthman, saying that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was supposed to be the leader. And yet Ali himself says, Uthman is my leader. Subhanallah. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, would not crush that revolt. They continue this fitna. And you have these people, this fitna rising from all the corners of the Muslim world. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, does not act harshly towards them. But instead he replaces governors as they request. And he acts towards them with softness. Until they finally lay the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu under siege. So he comes up to the people of... Uh of Medina and this is the last time he, he sees them and he addresses them in a short speech he tells them that indeed Allah has given you this dunya so that you can seek with it the hereafter the next life and he did not give it to you so you can be attached to it indeed the dunya fades away and the akhirah remains so do not be fooled by that which fades away and don't let it divert you from that which remains for the dunya ends and the journey is to Allah. Fear Allah for taqwa of Him is a protection from His punishment. And beware of Allah's ghira, yani don't approach Allah's sanctified place. Stay with the jama'ah and don't become groups and mention the blessings of Allah upon you as you were enemies. So, uh, so He united your hearts and you became through His blessings brothers. And then he tells them to go out and to not offer any protection. And then he says, O people of Medina, I bid you farewell. And I ask Allah Azza to give you a good Khalifa after me until Allah decrees his judgment. Nobody protect me. No one come to my defense. Not a single drop of blood will be shed because of me. So I'm going to my house and I'm going to stay there until I'm killed. That was the last khutbah. That was the last reminder of Uthman radiallahu anhu. I'm going to end that here. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't really have anything I can I can add right now. I I just have a feeling now he's the jealousy is going to lead to him being murdered. I just have that feeling. I'm getting mad thinking about that. So I'm going to end it here. And uh, we will be back with the third and final part. Which, uh, spoiler alert, two people try to murder him. And he like karate chops him. He throws the knives away. Then he takes a smoke bomb and throws it down. Explodes. Smoke goes everywhere. And he disappears like a, like a ninja magician. Bet. Or don't. So I'm going to end this here. Like and subscribe. And uh, until part three comes out, have a good day. Have a good night.